proud of my parents for taking that leap of faith in when like they knew people would call us crazy. This is Touched by Heaven, everyday encounters with God, those moments when heaven and earth collide. And we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, attempting to get our attention. Welcome. I am your host, Tramper Jack. So glad you're here today. Uh, we're going to be talking to Allison in a moment here. Right now, she's stuck in a Starbucks drive through with her two little kids in the back seat. Hey, Trapper, how are you? I'm good. You're in the car. Yeah, sorry. Always on the move. And I was actually kind of, I was like trapped in a Starbucks drive through it. We were not moving. What kind of coffee do we get? <laughs> I actually just got my kids two cake pops. Little cakes on a little stick for kids love them. They're like, you know. Oh, they're health food. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. They're good. For, it's yeah, good yeah, for them. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, we're all good then. Good. Right, right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Keep it down. <laughs> Come on, you got a cake thing. Cake pop. Cake pop. Yeah, you got a cake pop. What more do you want? Come on. Right. So I don't know how. I don't know how exactly this works. So I found your podcast and I love it. Um, just completely like binge it. It's awesome. We're talking about a mystic. And the mystic's involvement with Allison's family back when Allison was a kid. Now she's got kids of her own. So, but anyways, it's, and this mystic, Maria Esperanza from Venezuela. Yeah. Well, she, so she passed away in, I think, 2002. Four. I looked it up today. 2004. 2004 okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. She's famous for the, um, one of the things that she, it appears everything she wrote, uh, 9-11, she pretty much had that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a story to that people will, I want to like, you know, it's a powerful story, but it's personal. Do you think it will, it would be well received? I've never done anything like this. Yeah. I think it's, um, I think it's, it's a sign of the prophetic. When we talk about the difference between from above and from below, what is, what is, um, prophetic and what is, you know, mm -hmm. from, from, from the fall, <laughs> a lot of times fallen angels, uh, with what is psychic and, and help from the dark side. This is something that, this was just a message in the moment. So here's here's what we know about Maria Esper Esperanza, and she's uh, possibly on the road to sainthood. She's what's called servant of God, then you get to blessed, and then you get to canonization and sainthood once they find miracles involved and all that. But anyway, so she lived from 1928 to 2004. Jesus would come to her, Mary, uh, other saints would come to her. Uh, she had a lot of encounters with heaven, incredible prophetic gifts. Uh, said to be able to read souls, meaning she knew more about people sometimes than they did. Interesting, she met St. Padre Pio, and he actually became her spiritual director for a while, but because of the distance between Italy and Venezuela, that wasn't going to work out. But when he died in 1968, and remember he had these the, the stigmata signs, he had them for 50 years on his body, the, the, the wounds of Christ. And when he died, they disappeared. I mean, it was just part of the mystical nature of, of Padre Pio. But when he died, he appeared to Maria Esperanza, and then she had the, the wounds of Christ, but only on Good Friday. As she became known, she began traveling the world, giving talks, a lot of it here in the U.S., and, and she would generally, after a talk, she would then talk to anybody who wanted to talk to her. She didn't have to. She just did. And she would have these little private meetings with people and with an interpreter, tell that person what it is that God wanted that person to know. This story today has to do with one of those encounters. Allison's mom went to see Maria talk, and then she had a little moment with her, and what was revealed to her changed the family's trajectory, changed their future. So that's where we're going to go today with this mystic so beautifully connected to heaven and a gift that saved tragedy from happening with Allison's family. Okay, where would you like to start your story? Just a little background. I have four siblings, so kind of a big, bigger family, um, devout Catholic family. Oh, we all went to, since kindergarten to high school, um, Catholic school. And um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. Um, my dad was an entrepreneur and still, I guess, is. Um, and, you know, sometimes it was stressful financially and stuff like that a lot of pressure, just not taking a paycheck and payroll and insurance and everything else that comes with it. 
Um, so I remember growing up, you know, feeling, um, blessed of course, but like knowing the pressure of just hearing them kind of like chat about, um, making payroll and stuff like that. So, um, so every, I would say like pattern of every about five years, he would try to sell a business and then that would, you know, he put some into a house or something like that and then carry on to the next one. And that's just kind of how it went. Um, but so when I was in, I want to say like second grade, we moved from like a very small house to a, a nice neighborhood. Um, it sat on a lake and it was just kind of like the idyllic, you know, play kick the can. We, um, play tag. All the neighbors were really nice. Um, could, there's a bike trail around the lake. Like, yeah, you, know, you can boat, you could go in a canoe, you could do a, you know, it's just awesome. So about a year into living there, um, my, one of my parents, I don't know which one found in the basement, the, this people that they bought it from were, they had teenagers and they were using it kind of as like a fort. And we were so younger. I'm the second oldest. And, um, they found like very satanic, demonic writings, like sketch etches and writings and, um, just pretty, pretty dark stuff. And my dad, I remember my dad was like, do we move? Do we, what, what do we do? Was it stuff that, that should have been moved out, but just wasn't? What, can you say what it was? It was like, no, it wasn't stuff. It was writings. Like it was, so it was like plywood and two by four that was in an unfinished part of the basement that they used as kind of like their own makeshift fort. And we were using it as storage. So they didn't see it for a while. Okay. And we were like, playing in it and you know around it and di- had no idea so they were freaked out though and I remember not being able to don't go in there don't go in there like it was a big deal so a priest came pretty sure blessed it, and they were like okay I think this is okay we always had a ton of like honestly I was kind of embarrassed at some points growing up in middle school and stuff like a ton of um over the top I would say almost blessed stuff. And my mom went to Medjugorje twice, once when she was pregnant with me. And then another time, you know, uh, years later, and then my dad went once as well. So we knew about Medjugorje and, uh, you know, there was just a lot of Catholic blessed stuff in the house. Uh, That's important kind of later. So again, my dad working for himself and it was during the, um, dot com bust. He had a big blow up and the the company was going South quick. This is early two thousands then, right? Yeah, early 2000s. It was a, a tech, small tech startup. Um, he's, yeah, an engineer by background, but also an entrepreneur and stuff. So, you know, wasn't paying himself at first and last out kind of thing. And very quickly, they like went from comfortable, never wealthy, you know, comfortable to almost broke. And I just remember like little things that I could kind of pick up on, like, I wouldn't get my report card and they'd be like, well, go to the office. So I went to the office and they're like, well, um, you didn't get your report card cause you didn't pay tuition. And I'm like, okay, well call my mom. And they was like, we did. And she said, they don't have tuition money right now. So I'm like, okay, do I go back to class? <laughs> like, so like little things like that, yeah. that you just kind of do and you pick up on stress. Like I was old enough to kind of know that stuff wasn't going great. Um, but they did always do a good job of being like, all right, all right, well, dad's got this, you know. So my mom's best friend is from Venezuela and she, um, very just Catholic and holy and just such a good human. Um, she's like Maria Speranza. I think she said she's pretty sure it was LA. I know it was somewhere in California and it's like a once in a lifetime thing because she's getting older. You know, it's a big deal. She's like, okay. have to go. so she goes and my mom's friend is like, I think I could get us back backstage or I don't exactly know what it was, but whatever it is. I'm one yeah, I don't think of her as putting on shows per se, yeah. but so here's what would happen at these Maria Esperanza events. There'd be a conference or whatever. She'd give a talk. Maybe it's a few hundred people. Maybe it's a thousand people and she'd give her talk and what, what she was receiving through Jesus, you know, from Mary. Think about this, a thousand people. And if most of them stuck around, so sometimes she would be there till two, three, four o'clock in the morning. She, if somebody wanted to talk to her, they talked to her. So here we have Allison's mom and her friend from South America who could speak Spanish, obviously. And she says, I have a message from Maria Esperanza from Mary um, to give to your friend, which is my mom. 
But the message was from Maria from Mary. And she said the, she addressed this stuff in the basement. She said that that was, you know, you're protected, but that is not good. It's satanic and all that. So Marie Esperanza said, brings up the, 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 the fort and with all the junk that's and the demonic stuff down there. Yeah. She brings that up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she says that my dad has a lot of stress and pressure and he's a lot of anxiety. Um, and he's pacing back and forth and she sees water and they live on this big lake. Okay. So she's seeing yeah. your dad walking around to the waters nearby and all that. Okay. Okay. And he's a notorious pacer, like, to this day. Okay. And, um, yeah, and she's like, yeah, he's got a lot of business stress. We're probably going to have to file business bankruptcy and personal bankruptcy. Like, the house is over leveraged, all this stuff. Mess. And um, she says, okay, you have to sell your house and move because... Because, and this is where the story has to get a little mysterious here, to protect some very good people in this story. So I will just merely put it this way. Maria Esperanza got very specific, but if they stayed in that house, if Allison's family stayed in that house, they were in danger, in particular the kids, but they were in danger and something devastating was going to happen. And Maria told them what that would be. Now, if they sold the house to somebody else, that family would not be in danger. This was specific to Allison's family and you have got to move and get out of the house. So my mom said, well, my dad is very fair. He, he, won't, he won't move and let this be someone else's problem too. And she said, Mary, we'll take care of it. My mom also said, well, no bank in the world will give us a loan right now. We're, you know, over, way over leveraged, all this stuff. And she said, Mary, we'll take care of it, but you have to trust and it will be okay. But if you don't, it won't be okay. So they sold their house. They put a sign in the yard and they left. They found a house, they found a loan, and we only lived there for a short time because my dad actually sold, ended up selling his business. And it was like a big, huge, life-changing thing for our family, actually. Um, that, and and just know, a sidebar here, you told me what that was. We can't say what it was because it would yeah, identify no. who your dad is and things like that. Yeah. Uh, big, it, I, it, it's But to just to, the caliber, this, this is something everybody wouldn't, everybody kind of knows this story, but just didn't know that it was your dad. Let's put it that way. Yeah, uh, yeah. That a major tech company bought an idea. It's one of those things where they buy, as opposed to doing it themselves, they bought an idea. It happened to be your dad's idea. Um, mm -hmm. And so, okay, so you're, <laughs> you're, so your 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 family's being made whole again, basically, right? Right. I mean, it was like out of thin air because it was like dead in the water, and it wasn't a low ball. It was like a very fair, good IP kind of offer for right. this. You're right for the IP for the software because it was down the road kind of thing. And, um, it was just, it was truly a miracle. So we thought that that was the miracle. And, and so we thought that was it. And then in 2012, 2012, about 10 years or so later, it's confirmed. They find out that had they stayed, it would have been devastating to the family. What Maria Esperanza had said would happen. They find out at that point, it would have happened. But because but because they trusted her and this message that Mary gave to Maria to give to this family, they were safe. But we just go back to that, like that we are completely protected at, you know, high level. And especially my two younger brothers, they have this, like, they're so special. And like, I could cry because I mean, they're like, just, they're my little brothers, but I, there's such an age gap that I feel like they're, they're just so special. And I really feel like they were spared from all this, I'm sorry, like potential trauma that like that could ruin people's lives and ruin families and stuff. And I just feel like Mary like protected us and spared us from all this. And I'm so like proud of my parents for taking that leap of faith and when like they knew people would call us crazy and um sorry. Yeah. But to your and point, I, you, your your feeling is that your 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 young your younger brothers who are in their twenties now are pretty special guys, and they got protected. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're just so grateful. Um, and I know some people will probably be like, "Well, that's a coincidence or whatever," but it, there's just no way. Like, there's no way. There's no denying it. Well, you lived it. I, you right. know, it dazzles me. I'll tell you, it dazzles me. And, and, and Marie Esperanza is a name. She is certainly 
a well-known name. I don't know a lot about her. I, in fact, when I found out I was going to talk to you today, I kind of did a real quick search of just some stuff, but I, I, I don't know the half of her, obviously. But, yeah. um, but, but the name was familiar, and then I did a little research today before talking to you, and I'll do more you know, after this. But but she's she is a name and and we've again prophetic versus psychic. This is this is has nothing to do with psychic. This has to do with Holy Spirit, with heaven, with God, with Jesus, with Mary. I mean, this is this is all from above, and it's very yeah. different. You'll notice she wasn't conjuring up the dead, and then I got a message from you know somebody on the other side. This was in the moment. You have a friend, and she got you out of harm's way. You got to look at the fruit of this. You've got to look at the fruit to tell you where this came from. Right, right. And that's a good point because my parents growing up were always like, never do, you know, it's just pop, like when I was growing up, it was um, sleepovers and like Ouija boards and stuff. And my mom was like, never have anything to do with that. And she was just so strong about that. And so when she told us that she was like adamant, this is not a psychic. This is completely different. Yeah. Um, so thanks for bringing that up. I meant to actually say that. But you were protected. Right. But go back to the faith again of, okay, you have your mom. She's there getting the message in L.A. or wherever it was. You're worrying dad um, at, the, at, the, at the peak of all this when I can't sell the house. There's no way. And then to try to get something else, there's no way. But he did it anyway out of pure faith. Yeah. Well, that's just my dad. He like Oh my God, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. He just like doesn't give up very easily. And like just to his background of like always betting on himself, but it's like not just that. It's like a bigger picture of he has faith that God will take care. I mean, not blind faith where it's like he's so hardworking, obviously, and stuff like that. But like he has this like unshakable faith. And so does my mom that, you know, it's okay to take risks and, um, dream big and stuff and it, it'll largely has worked out um but i think i truly believe and i don't know if this is my parents belief but i i truly believe that that um business wouldn't have worked out just if it wasn't if they didn't take the leap of faith because it's so far gone yeah. um and like i just i think that that was part of it like a i don't want to say reward but like kind of like part of the whole package like you gotta complete surrender and have trust that it'll be okay and then it was mary protected and god protected us from that then it's it's all good and i'm not saying that like my family is more special than any anybody but i truly do feel like these like special graces from mary that like um you know and it says a lot about um the devotion your mom obviously has for mary um yeah, I can't remember where this was said, where Jesus said, all graces come from, from my mother, Mary. And, and if you're not Catholic, maybe you don't quite get that. But this is, this is just, <laughs> this is 2,000 years of, of tradition. That's what this is all rooted in. And just so everyone understands, uh, there is the Bible alone way. And then there is that, as St. As Paul said, hang on tightly to those traditions, oral traditions that are passed down. Uh, and so what the church has done over the years is that, yes, you have scripture and nothing in tradition can contradict what is biblical. So all the traditions that are passed on about Mary cannot contradict the Bible. And then you add in what's called the magisterium, which is the church hierarchy and what they do. They all have to work in alignment. So basically what that means is, is that nothing changes. Nothing, very little has changed in 2,000 years in terms of teachings, because it has all been passed down, nothing contradicting anything else within it. So when people don't quite understand the, the Mary thing, it's just always been there. They have found, they have found prayers written to Mary to intercede back in like, you know, the two, around 200 and stuff like that. It's just always been there. Just like I would ask you to pray for me, I'll ask Mary to pray for me. It's the same thing. It's all in the body of Christ. And I always think of Mary like just peace and grace and um you know she's just there's there's some i think in the glorious mysteries because i try to say the rosary a couple times a week and there's something about when i think the last glorious mystery is they're crowning her queen of heaven and earth mm -hmm. and she's comforting the apostles because you know they just lost jesus and it's like 
I have two kids myself. I can't, and he is so perfect and innocent and this, and she watched him just have the worst possible death that you can have. And he was completely pure and innocent and she's comforting them. I just always, like that always like stuck out to me. One of the things that Chad Ripperger says, he's an exorcist. And according to what the demons have said to him, the greatest, the, the most virtuous moment in recorded history was Mary at the cross. She wasn't sneering or yelling at the soldiers as they pounded nails into her son. She wasn't cursing God for what he was allowing to happen. She wasn't sneering back at the jeering crowd. She just took it like he took it. She just took it without without any animosity towards anybody else. And the demons were shocked that anybody could do that in that situation. And that's why they call it the most virtuous moment ever. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Take a breath. For just a moment, we're going to pause. Then more with Allison here on Touched by Heaven. Quick Patreon shout out. Thank you, Mike and Michelle May, for joining the Patreon family and keeping this all going. And we actually met, got to meet, meet this lovely couple in Medjugorje last October. And uh, thank you for, for supporting what we do. Um, I've, I've often heard it, that it's not about what we do or what anybody does. It's the why of why you do it. Why do you do what you do? The why of Touched by Heaven, as, as I look at it, and I kind of keep looking at it from different angles, you know, the, um, the, the, about, about God as, the, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, and all that, uh, it's, the, it's the is now that is so attractive about these Touch by Heaven stories and, and sometimes gets, gets lost out there, that God is still sending angels and prophetic dreams and visions and, yes, near-death experiences and divine interventions. And what Touch by Heaven does, obviously, is showcase these because sometimes it feels like this mountain of miracles that is going on all around us every day is covered in this invisibility cloak. And so what Touched by Heaven does is take the invisibility cloak off so you can see all the is now to go along with the as it was in the beginning and ever shall be. So uh, thank you for your stories. Uh, and if you're, if, you're, if you're still sitting on, on, on your, well, you've got an invisibility cloak on your miracle or, or angel encounter, whatever it is, get a hold of me here at Touched by Heaven. Dot net. Love to hear that story. And of course, to support, you can come here to touchbyheaven.net as well. This episode, click your way through to Patreon, and thank you so much for your support. All right, let's get back now to Allison here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. Well, thank you for letting me share that. I haven't told, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting thing that happened because it's like I'm I'm afraid like my friends will think I'm crazy or like my family's crazy and um and people probably have thought that but um I did want to share it because I just think it's such a testament to your message and especially with Medjugorje and Mary and the power of just high level like trusting and um just this my parents have this just unshakable faith and um I think I'm just so grateful for that foundation because none of my friends have any faith here. And I just don't understand like how I, and I'm not trying to be pushy and I'm not that kind of person. I just, I really, they're good people that just have zero faith and I just don't get it. No, it's, 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 I know what you're saying. And it's sad because we, we, you and I both know, Boy, in those tough times, it's so nice to be able to lean on somebody instead of just hanging out there. And when you see, look, and even if you have an issue with anything said, you look at the fruit, just look at the fruit of what your family has had. Look at the fruit of Magigoria, where all these, con- I mean, millions of conversion stories, thousands of men are now priests because of going there. I know that the priest, I, I, put him on, I put him on the podcast, this gentleman that I went to confession to there, a priest. And at the end of, the, end of my confession, I thanked him for hearing my confession. He said, well, I'm a priest because I came here and something happened here. And he explained it. And that's when I pulled out my recorder and said, would you tell, would you, can, may, I, may I interview you? <laughs> He's going, this is a confession. I know, but we're done with the confession. Can I do? And he was gracious enough that, uh, that we did that. Um, there's just fruit. You just have to always look at what happened out of that. What happened? Who was is Jesus smiling or is the demon smiling? And that tells you everything you need to know, generally speaking. 
I don't feel like a lot of people even know what Medjugorje is or the power of it. Um, you always hear, or at least me, I always hear about Lourdes and Botanica, Botanic. Fatima. <laughs> it's close. It's Fatima. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I've heard of it cause I grew up. Yeah. And it's not, but, it's not what's called an approved Catholic uh, place. It's, it's a Marian shrine. It's been approved for pilgrimage, Marian shrine. These things often take a long, 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 long time. Actually, I heard that they're getting close to uh, approving the first week or two of apparitions back in early 1981. But that's, you know, because the commission that Pope Benedict uh, opened up on, on, on investigating that part of all of this came back overwhelmingly that the commission believed what happened then and everything that Mary was said and the, and the, the, the visionaries and all that. So that you would think that's still, that, that may still happen pretty soon. We'll see. We'll see. I, I think I might have mentioned before when we were chatting, but both my parents are going together in October um, to Medjugorje, so I'm excited for them. Well, thank you so much, Trevor. Oh, well, well, let me ask you before you before and, and thank you for this. And I, you're a, you're a beautiful young mom. But um, as far as a takeaway, I always ask my guests for takeaways. So, uh, what's yours in all of this? I'd say Padre Pio, pray, hope, don't worry, and just trust and. Um, trust because if my mom she said she cried the whole plane ride home and if she didn't trust and my dad too um who knows where we'd be and um i think trust is the main takeaway for me god bless you you know and as i do a little more research into maria esperanza's life and how the basic message that she delivered uh, from Mary through her was reconciliation of family. It was it was mostly most of the messages had to do with family that everything was being fractured, and families were being fractured, and it was recon reconciliation of family because when the family falls apart, society falls apart. Uh, look around, right? And uh, so the whole thing is about reconciliation of family, and and not and Mary didn't just tell Maria Esperanza tell them to get their families together. It was no come to me. Come to your heavenly mom, and I will help you. I will help you. As, as she helped keep the unity of this family, Allison's family, in this story. But thanks, Allison. Love your story. Sorry we had to kind of cloak it a little bit here um, with what the devastation would have been. But trust me, uh, some very good people needed to be protected in this episode. But I, I hope you got the idea that uh, bad, thing, bad things would have happened. So, And they were averted. So thank you for your story, Allison, and God bless you. Your family, your two little ones that were in the back there with their cake pops, <laughs> thank you for sharing the road with us today. And uh, and what is your story? Let me know here at touchedbyheaven.net. Thank you so much for your Patreon support at patreon.com or come here to episode 260 at touchedbyheaven.net. All right. And I'll see you next week here at Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. I'm Trapper Jack, where each week we have we have fun in a different way two cake pops little cakes on a little stick for kids love them Bye -bye.